Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 16 of the chapter Thermodynamics. We are now going to study the different kinds of enthalpies of reaction. The first type that we'll be studying in this video is the enthalpy changes that take place during phase changes, that is during the change in state of substances. What are the different phase changes or state changes that take place? If you have solid ice, let's take the example of water. Water, when it is in the form of a solid, it's known as ice. Ice turns into water, liquid water, at its melting point. And this process is known as fusion. So the energy change that takes place in this process would be known as the enthalpy of fusion. Again, we are going to talk of the standard enthalpy. So I'll come to that part later. And we're going to talk of the molar enthalpies. I've explained what standard enthalpies are, what molar enthalpies are. So these enthalpies in the phase changes that we would be doing would actually be the uh, standard enthalpy changes and molar enthalpy changes. So when solid water turns into, uh, solid ice turns into water, liquid water, we call it fusion. So the enthalpy change in this step is known as the enthalpy of fusion. Then if you have liquid water and it turns into uh, the gas, at its boiling point, water turns into water vapor or it turns into uh, gaseous water. So this again is a phase change and the enthalpy that is change that is involved in converting one mole of liquid water to gaseous water would be known as the enthalpy of vaporization because here what is the process that is taking place? Vaporization. So this would be the enthalpy of vaporization. Also, we know that substances like carbon dioxide, like naphthalene balls, they are in their solid state. They do not pass into the liquid state. They directly get converted into the gaseous state. And the process is known as sublimation. So the enthalpy, again, for a solid to turn into a liquid and liquid to turn into a gas, the substance needs to absorb heat. In the same way, for a solid to turn into a gas directly, also heat has to be given. So enthalpy changes do take place and this change of the solid to the gas is known as sublimation. So the enthalpy change that takes place in this process for one mole of the substance would be known as the enthalpy of sublimation. You know the reverse also takes place. These are all when solid ice turns into liquid it absorbs heat and turns into liquid. So you know whenever heat is being absorbed the value of the state function we say is positive because heat of the system is increasing. So if the opposite takes place, that is liquid water is turning into ice, that much it will have to give out the same amount of heat. So that would be the enthalpy of freezing or um, it would be the enthalpy for the freezing process. So uh, the opposite also takes place, but here the sign, or the value, the amount of heat, that is the enthalpy change would remain the same, only the positive enthalpy would turn into negative. So let us just read this in details once. You have water, solid water, turning into water, which is a liquid, one mole of water, under the standard states. Now this water is pure and it's in the standard state. And we know at what temperature does uh, solid water turn into uh, liquid, that is ice, at what temperature does ice turn into water? At zero degree Celsius or 273 Kelvin. So at this temperature, we find that it is in its pure state and it's in the standard state, one bar pressure and the solid is turning into liquid. At this time, the enthalpy change that takes place is about 6 kilojoules per mole. For one mole of water, solid water to turn into ice, it requires 6 kilojoules of heat for one mole. So this would be known as the molar enthalpy. And what is the process that is taking place? Melting or fusion? So it is known as the molar enthalpy of fusion. And since the state is standard, water was pure, the pressure was one bar, therefore it is the standard. You see the negative sign here? It means it is the standard enthalpy of fusion. So what is standard enthalpy of fusion then? The enthalpy change and you remember what did I do here? Instead of FUS, I could have written a general term as R. It is the enthalpy of reaction. But in this case, we are specifying the reaction to be a process. The process is fusion. So we call it the enthalpy of fusion. So the enthalpy change that accompanies the melting of one mole of a solid substance, in this case, we took water, in its standard state, 
is called the standard enthalpy of fusion and how will we write it down delta h fusion and for the standard we put a negative superscript as negative and the process is written as a subscript after the delta and h of course represents the enthalpy now we take the next process that is vaporization water one mole of water in the liquid state is turning into one mole of gas and the enthalpy now what is the boiling point of water the boiling point of water we know is 100 degrees celsius which means 373 kelvin at 373 kelvin this reaction would take place and the pressure is again one bar it is taking place in an open vessel one bar atmospheric pressure so the pressure standard condition one bar the water we took was pure therefore the water vapors that will be formed would also be pure so this would now be known as the enthalpy of this enthalpy of reaction would be known as the standard enthalpy of vaporization it is under standard state it is vaporization that is taking place so this reaction is vaporization so we call it delta h vaporization under the standard state and what is the amount of heat that is required to turn water one mole of water to one mole of gas uh, at its boiling point it is 40.79 kilojoules per mole here it's interesting to mention one thing that have you noticed that when you put a thermometer in a liquid in water that is boiling what as you put a, th a thermometer into water which is let us say at 50 degrees celsius the thermometer shows the temperature rising from 50 to 100 degrees celsius till the water reaches its boiling point when the water reaches its boiling point we see the bubbles coming and the vapors water turning into water vapor but as long as all the water turns into water vapor if you notice your thermometer will continue to read 100 degrees celsius the thermometer continues to have the same temperature it means that once the process starts although you're providing heat this heat is not being used to raise the temperature of the substance it is only being used to convert to change the state of the substance right this is something worth noticing that these processes actually take place at a fixed temperature when the ice is turning into water the temperature remains zero degrees celsius till all of the ice turns into water and then the water starts the temperature of the water if you continue giving more and more heat the temperature of the water starts rising after that J just mentioning it's not really related to the enthalpies here but this is something that you must know and that i'm sure you would have noticed so now we know what is enthalpy of fusion standard enthalpy of fusion what is standard enthalpy of vaporization the third process would be sublimation where a solid gets converted into a gas directly so yeah i also told you if the opposite process were to take place that is instead of vaporization it was condensation that is taking place then we would call it the enthalpy of condensation and what would the value be for water the enthalpy of vaporization was plus 40.79 kilojoules for condensation which is the opposite process for the same amount of water you would use the same you would require it would release the same amount of energy that is 40.79 kilojoules per mole but the sign would change this is you're providing heat to the system here the system is giving out heat so it is losing heat so it is if it is losing it it loses minus 40.79 of heat is lost by the system so now we come to sublimation carbon dioxide which is a solid turns into carbon dioxide a gas again just like your melting point and boiling point uh, are fixed at 195 kelvin we find that carbon dioxide starts turning into a gas till all of it turns into a gas and the enthalpy change involved here again carbon dioxide is in its purest form the change is taking place at one bar pressure therefore this would be known as the standard enthalpy of sublimation and for carbon dioxide it comes out to be 25.2 kilojoules for one mole of carbon dioxide naphthalene balls that we use uh, we call them moth balls uh, to save our clothing in winters to prevent the uh, moths from attacking our clothes the pure fibers these naphthalene balls they 
uh, take months to vaporize. They are also subliming, they are turning from solid directly to the gaseous state, only the process of sublimation is much slower. Why? Because the enthalpy of sublimation is much higher. They need much more energy to get converted into vapors. Therefore, the enthalpy of, I have not written the formula of naphthalene because when we do organic chemistry, that is where it's a little complex. That is where you would study the uh, formula of naphthalene. Right now, just understand that for naphthalene, the enthalpy of sublimation for one mole of naphthalene is 73 kilojoules per mole, which is larger, which is higher. Therefore, naphthalene takes longer to vaporize or sublime in comparison to carbon dioxide. Now we come to uh, the definition of the standard enthalpy of sublimation. It will be represented by delta H sub, where sub represents the process that is sublimation and the negative with the uh, inside the circle as a superscript represents that the substances were in their standard states. I will again repeat, standard state means that the substance is pure and it is present at one bar pressure. But the change is taking place at a certain temperature which is specific to that substance. So standard enthalpy of sublimation is the change in enthalpy when one mole of sub solid substance sublimes at a constant temperature and under standard pressure that is one bar. Now whatever be these enthalpies, whether it is enthalpy of uh, what fusion, enthalpy of vaporization, enthalpy of condensation, enthalpy of sublimation, all of these enthalpies they, their magnitude, how much would it, would it be more or would it be less, it depends on the intramolecular forces of attraction that exist in the substance. Water, you need much more energy to convert water into steam, that is to vaporize water. In comparison to the amount of heat that you have to use for acetone, for one mole of acetone. So the molar enthalpy of vaporization of water is much higher than the molar enthalpy of vaporization for acetone. And what is the reason? In water, there are hydrogen bonds. The hydrogen bonds are a kind of a very strong attraction. We've studied about chemical bonding and we've studied uh, hydrogen bonding there. If uh, you do not know what a hydrogen bond is, I would encourage you to watch that the series of videos or the playlist of uh, chemical bonding and molecular structure that I have done. So now you have, the, due to the hydrogen bonding, water molecules have stronger forces of attraction between them. Therefore, to vaporize them, they will have to, you have to provide heat to overcome this force of attraction also. And only then the water molecules would vaporize. And that's the reason why the enthalpy of vaporization of water is more because the forces of interaction between its molecules is more. Now there is a table given which, uh, uh, which scientists refer to, which give us the enthalpies of fusion, enthalpies of vaporization, enthalpies of sublimation of different substances. If I have to carry out a change, I will have to see, you know, uh, when I want to vaporize something or I want to change the state of something industrially, you have to see how, what is its enthalpy of vaporization to have an idea how much of heat would you have to provide if for one mole this much of heat has to be provided, then if I have these many moles, then how much of heat would I have to provide to carry out this process so that energy is not wasted and if energy is not wasted, you can bring down the cost of production or the, of the process that you are carrying out. So you have this table that you refer to. I just put a picture, insert a picture of this table of a few substances and their enthalpies of vaporize, the standard molar enthalpies of these uh, substances. And now we do just one solved numerical which is given you in your NCRT text before I wind up this uh, video. Now this is question 6.7. It is the solved example of your NCRT textbook. And I'm going to discuss this uh, now in order to make it clear how we use these enthalpies of fusion, vaporization, etc. The question is that a swimmer coming out of a pool is covered with a film of water weighing about 18 grams. He comes out of the pool and he has a film of water over his body and the mass of that water is 18 grams. How much heat must be supplied to evaporate this water at 298 Kelvin? Remember, water evaporates at all temperatures. Even during winters, when you put out your clothes to dry out in the sun, even at lower temperatures, water does vaporize. And since this 
is enthalpy and enthalpy is a state function. It doesn't matter what temperature is the change taking place at. That process requires that much of energy change. The enthalpy change is the same. You may carry out the process at a different temperature that the other parameters may change. But the amount of energy is the same. So this is the water is evaporating at 298 Kelvin. Why, why I am telling you this is that we are really not concerned about the temperature at which this process is taking place because we are going to use the reference table where the process of the uh, amounts or the values are given to us in, at specific under the standard conditions. The enthalpy, I was telling you that the temperature at which this takes place uh, is not really important because it's a state function and we are really concerned about the energy changes. So let us uh, read the rest of the question. You have to calculate the internal energy, internal energy changes delta U of vaporization at 100 degrees Celsius. Now since this is given to us in Celsius, 100 degrees Celsius would be what temperature in Kelvin? 100 degrees Celsius would be equal to 373 Kelvin. And delta H vaporization of water is given to us at 373 Kelvin. You know this is from the table and the value is 40.66 kilojoules per mole. So since it's a state function we don't bother about this part that the evaporation is taking place at a lower temperature. We just know that on the whole the enthalpy change and internal energy change is fixed because state A and state B liquid water 18 grams of liquid water is turning into 18 grams of uh, water vapor. So that is our uh, concern. So we have 18 grams of water that is liquid turning into 18 grams of water gas, right? This is the change that is taking place. Now the first thing that we should be concerned about is when I was doing all these enthalpies, I told you the enthalpy of reaction is the molar enthalpy of reaction. And we've been given a specific mass of water. We should first know how many moles is this mass. If we know how many moles this mass is, then in that ratio we can find out, we can calculate accordingly. Because this equation should be a molar equation. H2O liquid to give you H2O gas should be for one mole of liquid turning into one mole of gaseous water. So 18 grams of water, how many moles does it make? Let us calculate the molar mass of water. H2O has a mass of, hydrogen has a mass of 1 into 2 plus, there, because there are two atoms of hydrogen, and oxygen has a mass of 16, which means the molar mass of water is 18 grams. In other words, this equation is already a molar equation, right? So now, what is the next step? We have to calculate the enthalpy of the internal energy of vaporization. First, we should know what is enthalpy of vaporization. Delta H vaporization is equal to delta U vaporization plus P delta V. Right? But since we do not have P and V here, we will and we are assuming this water into, to be turning into water vapor. And assuming the water vapor to be an ideal gas, we will use delta NGRT. So delta uh, vaporization H would be equal to delta U vaporization plus delta NGRT. Now we have been asked delta U. We already have the value of delta H vaporization, right? We could put these, you know, the, uh, for standard states. So the, the standard enthalpy of vaporization is known to us. We have to calculate delta U. So let us just rearrange this. Delta U vaporization standard would be equal to delta vaporization H minus delta NGRT. Right? Now delta H vaporization is given to us is 40.66 kilojoules per mole. Remember we have established that the equation is already for one mole. So we are not changing this value, the value of delta H. If the number of moles was different, we would have had to multiply it by the stoichiometric coefficient, remember? But since the stoichiometric coefficient here is 1, we are keeping this value as such. Minus, what is delta Ng? It is 1. We assume since there is no change in number of moles, it is 1. And R, R we have to use in kilojoules per mole we should get. 
So for kilojoules per mole, the value of R should be equal to um, 8.314, 8.314 into 10 to the power minus 3 kilojoules per mole per Kelvin, right? This is the value of R, the gas constant that we would use. And temperature given to us is 373 Kelvin, 373 Kelvin. The Kelvin and Kelvin inverse will get cancelled. You will get your, this part in kilojoules per mole. So this would be equal to delta U vaporization would be equal to 40.66 kilojoules per mole minus, and when we calculate this, this comes out to be equal to 3.10 kilojoules per mole. 3.10 kilojoules per mole. And if you subtract this amount, you will get 6, 1 would be 5, and 3 would be 37. Right? 37.56 kilojoules per mole would be the enthalpy, not the enthalpy, the internal energy change of vaporization. Right? Let me just check. Yes, 37.56 kilojoules per mole is the change in internal energy. So this is how you would be solving numerical problems which are based on enthalpy of vaporization. You have to remember the value that is given to you is molar enthalpy. And you have to remember the part that I did in the previous video where enthalpy of reaction, what are you supposed to do? You have to find out the sum of the enthalpies of the products minus sum of enthalpies of reactants and always writing down, multiplying the values of enthalpies by the stoichiometric coefficient. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.